Scientific images like this are displayed with a vertical scale that's not in depth, but in two-way seismic travel time. In order to understand the geology here, it's useful to convert this travel time scale to one in real depth. And we can do this using this example here from the Northwest Indian Ocean. We can use typical seismic velocities to estimate, first of all, the water depth, then the thickness of the sedimentary cover, and finally the thickness of the oceanic crust upon which that sedimentary cover was deposited. So let's start off with the seabed. Now in common with seismic surveys that are acquired across uh, deep water, this image has been cropped so that much of the water column is not displayed. In fact, it's cropped just above the seabed, which comes in at about six seconds two-way time. So the seabed is six seconds down. To work out what that means in terms of real bathymetry, in terms of meters and kilometers, we need to understand the seismic velocity of seawater. We can use a velocity of 1.5 kilometers a second. So in six seconds, the seismic energy has traveled there and back from the seismic source down to the seabed and up to some receivers. It's taken six seconds to do it with a velocity of 1.5 kilometers per second. Therefore, the seismic energy has traveled a total of six times 1.5 equals nine kilometers. But because it was there and back, the depth of the seabed is just one way. So it's half of nine. In other words, it's 4.5 kilometers as the bathymetry of this part of the Indian Ocean. OK, now let's turn our attention to the sediment thickness and let's pick the top of the sediment which we'll do by just picking the base of that uh, well layered reflectivity which is seen in the upper part of the profile somewhere through there we're saying that the material underneath that uh, green pick that we've got there is oceanic crust and we'll come to that in a minute so let's look at the thickness of the sediments it's that interval there it's the difference between six seconds and about 7.2 seconds, so it has an interval thickness of 1.2 seconds two-way time. So in order to work out the thickness of these sedimentary rocks, we need to assign a seismic velocity. And because these just underlie the seabed and are not deeply buried, therefore, we'll use a value for uncompacted, unconsolidated sands and muds. So we'll assign a seismic velocity of two kilometers a second. Therefore, the seismic energy in traveling through that interval and back has traveled a distance of 1.2 times 2 kilometers, in other words, 2.4 kilometers. But because it's there and back, we need to halve that value. So the real sediment thickness here, assuming those values, is 1.2 kilometers. Right, now let's turn our attention to the oceanic crust that underlies those sediments. And we'll pick the base of the crust along the base of that bright reflectivity layer that lies roughly nine seconds two-way time in the image. There. So that's the base of the crust. In other words, it's the moho. Um, so let's work out the thickness of this in terms of two-way time. Well, the top of that unit is the green reflector, the base of the sediments, which comes in at 7.2 seconds two-way time. The moho in the area we're interested in there comes in at about 8.8 .8 seconds two-way time. So the difference is 1.6 seconds. Again, we need to assign an interval velocity for the oceanic crust. And a typical value is around seven kilometers a second. So the seismic energy has traveled from the top of that oceanic crust to the moho and back to the top of the oceanic crust in 1.6 seconds with a velocity of seven kilometers per second. Therefore, that seismic energy has traveled 11.2 kilometers. That's two-way travel distance. The single distance between the top of the crust and the base of the crust is half of that value. In other words, it's 5.6 kilometers. So to summarize, let's put all these values together. We've done a simple depth conversion. We've seen that the seabed is 4.5 kilometers down. Beneath the seabed, there's about 1.2 kilometers of sediments. And this sedimentary cover overlies a basement of oceanic crust that was 5.6 kilometers thick. A simple illustration of using seismic travel times 
and interval velocities to work out the thicknesses in meters or kilometers of particular units on seismic profiles.